Welcome to Isolation Comedy by Comedy Wham. I'm Colton Dowling, I'm your host, and thank you for having me in your house. Uh, this is not a stand-up comedy show. If it were, I'd be saying like, shut up and don't drink too much and tip your waitresses. But uh, you can say whatever you want. You can yell at us and certainly feel free to hop in that chat right there, right there, and uh, roast us, we love it. And if you love us, send us a little thing on Venmo. We'll pop that up. And uh, you can also put us up on PayPal if you're like, what's Venmo? Um, no need to, no need to berate you. We, we love you so much. What a week, right? I had so many things to do, did none of them. I posted my first tasteful nude though. Uh, my grandma was like, I just got Instagram. Why are you ruining it for me? Uh, well, you know, it's fine. It's also eight o'clock somewhere in Austin. Welcome, hey, this is based in Austin, but I'm bunkering down in Colorado. So I'm gonna be doing a, uh, a drink and toast tonight, toast every comic, I do it every Friday. If you're not having a drink yet, go get one, I'm tasting the Rockies, so cheers. Let's go, let's get this started. Um, we have a whole bunch of comedy things today. I went on my first, um, First date, I know everybody's been online dating for a while now, we've done it. For me, it's just looking at grinder, scruff, going through different types of asses and fi finding out which one best fits my needs. Uh, this time I had to meet with them virtually um, because, it, well, the whole COVID thing. And he it was over coffee and he uh, had a Folgers coffee and I thought, yuck. But then I thought maybe he was a top and I'm, that's something that interests me. So uh, then I said, oh, nice coffee. Do you like Folgers? And he said, yes, I like to use it as skin scrub uh, because it makes a smooth skin. That's not a top. Every top knows that that will ruin your plumbing. Yeah, you can't put coffee grounds down the shower. Uh, so I just put on Netflix, just like right here. And I loved Tiger King. I watched it again. It was good. Uh, and then I was like, beep, boop, my connection's bad. And I left, which was the easiest date I had to get out of. So I recommend online dating. I also recommend every comedian on this show. If you've been with us since the beginning, then you know, like, we appreciate you so much. But we have been able to get co comics that are otherwise too busy headlining and not going to do another not headlining set. So you are in for a big treat. And I'm gonna start this off with our, uh, a very close, close uh, thematically. This is a man of my own heart. He also sings and he, he does a little bit of beatboxing, but who knows what he'll do. Let me bring up a storytelling, musical making, improvising comic from Austin, Texas, simply Courtney. <laughs> What's up, man? How y'all doing? I'm Simply Courtney. Um, show of hands here. Who here was surprised when you know, seeing the name Simply Courtney pop on the screen? And it was me. Yeah, okay. Thank y'all for being honest, man. Yo, it's difficult. Having the name Courtney is, is tough. I'm an Uber driver. Uh, obviously, I'm not a nut driver right now because of this whole lockdown of your health stuff. But uh, I'm an Uber driver, and it's weird. People do not believe my name is Courtney. Like, legit. I had a lady the other day. I went to pick her up. And I'm just like, hey, how's it going? I'm Courtney, I'm your driver. And this lady opened the door and looked at me, looked at her phone, looked back at me and just said, nope, and closed the door and walked away. That's a real thing. Crazy thing was it was raining. It's raining. Uh, life is tough, man. Uh, one of the hardest things I've ever dealt with being the name Courtney is um, I used to work with kids for a little while. And um, uh, I, I remember my first day on the job. I had to go in the gym and break up a fight. So I go into the gym and I yell at the kids. I'm like, hey, you kids, y'all stop fighting. One of the kids looks at me, looks at my name tag, and just goes, mister, 
my girlfriend has the same name as you. And the entire gym just busted out laughing. Yeah, my name broke up a fight. They laughed at my name so hard. Even the kid that was getting beat up took a moment and was like, yo, that's pretty damn funny. I just walked away. I said, you know what? Y'all kick his ass. I quit. Whatever. Went to my office and logged into LinkedIn and started crying. Um, I'm, I'm going to do something a little different because this comedy thing is uh, strange with no audience. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to try to make some music. They said, I have six minutes to do whatever it is the hell that I want. And so, baby, I'm just going to do that. Uh, I got some word suggestions from my friends earlier. And uh, it is, uh, let's see, it looks like it's backwards to me, but I think it makes sense to y'all. Donkey and hand sanitizer. So those are my word suggestions. I'm going to have fun with this. So let's see what we got. Put your hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer. Put your hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer. Put your hand sanitizer. Where are you at? Oh my God, that was fun though. That was fun. 
Oh my god, I gotta stop this shit. Uh, I don't know what the hell that was, but this was dope. Um, I had fun. Uh, this is the weirdest shit I've ever done, but guys, y'all be safe out there. It's scary times that we're living in as an asthmatic. I'm terrified. Uh, they told you guys to stay your asses at home and stay at home. Other than that, man, I'm done. I don't have nothing else to do other than tell you to hey, just put it in your that's it. I'm done. I'll see y'all later, man. I'm just simply Courtney, man. Y'all holla. Y'all holla. Be good. Be good, baby. Y'all be good. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed night. Bye. Put it in. Your- it in your ass i feel like straight people are like pandering a little bit too much to me these days they're like yeah i'll do your gay show i'm like yeah, it's, a, it's a good show and by the way if you're just joining us it's not just a gay show but boy it could be if you make it it's your house do whatever you want uh, oh yeah lizzie's gay and mk's gay actually we kind of have a, a couple gays on this show but that does not make it a gay show uh, I just want to let you know that this next comedian uh, happens to be featured in my web series where I lie about having a child. So I've been lying about having a kid for the last two years because it's funny to me. People say it's relatable and uh, they're like, well, having a kid is relatable. So I, I started lying about having one. And then I made a web series and Chris plays a... Uh, um, uh, we'll call him a curious cat but uh you just watch the web series and uh let us know let us know what you think uh please put your hands together in your own house and drink another beer this is a new one give it up for chris castles it tastes good Everybody watching? Can you tell how many people are watching? Can I talk to Richard during my set? Okay, no. Oh, okay. Fucking crazy. Hi, everybody. I don't know if you saw the last set, if you're just tuning in. But next time someone asks me to wash my hands, I'm going to tell them to put it on their ass. And they're just going to have to figure out what that means. Um, You know, I know everyone's kind of freaked out and I am too, but I just want to say that I felt a glimmer of hope when I was driving into town the other day and I saw this woman, an older woman try and cross the street and she had the right of way and this younger dude just cut her off, almost hit her and she was like, what the fuck? And then he honked like, fuck you and then kept driving. And in that moment, I was like, we're going to be fine. Everything's going to be okay. But I have a song about that. It's two musical acts in a row. Here we go. Everybody's worried about the present and the future. What are we going to do if we can't sell poison to each other? Hey, poison to each other. Hey. Mark it up real high and give all this poison a bunch of fancy names and we all profit off of each other and be like, holy shit, this is lame. We can't do this anymore. What are we gonna do? We don't have the jobs that weren't really great for society anyway and now they're gone. What are we gonna do? Hey, hey, we gonna do. Hey, hey, we gonna do. I'll tell you. Just sell drugs on the black market while cash is still legal. 
hey, cause come on, you know they're gonna take it, cause what better way to spread a virus than with money, and you know you'll have to show your papers when you're going down the street. They'll be like, hey, I played a lot of Call of Duty. You don't want to fuck with me. Hey, you better go home. It's a state of emergency. Hey. Hey. And just in case you think I'm a conspiracy theorist, no, I'm not. Actually, I have a family member working with COVID. Hey. Working with COVID, hey, working with COVID, hey. And they say it's pretty fucking brutal and scary. I can't spare you the details, but it's very real. Hey, hey, very real. Hey, hey, very real. <laughs> I just realized there's probably not a lot of funny things about what I've been saying, but hey, this is how I feel. Hey. How I feel, hey, how I feel, hey, I, I don't know how much time I have or how y'all feel about my set. I'm not even sure if it sounds that great. I spent all this time with my microphones, but it was crap. So I decided after hours of slaving around that the microphone and the laptop should be good enough. So I don't know if it sounds real good. Maybe it's a good thing you can't make out everything that I'm saying. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, thank you, guys. I think I have a couple minutes left. I just, I'm just going to play another song. Honestly, I thought of a lot of jokes, but they seem cynical and not helpful and music makes me feel good <clears throat> i also didn't write any lyrics because i can't remember shit i didn't really care for school because i didn't like remembering things people have already said i thought hey how about i try and articulate the things that are bouncing around in my own instead and maybe i'll create a new language and some words that nobody ever used before I, that's why I'm not in school, because I don't like being professional and I don't like following rules and stuff. That's why I don't understand why. People want me to be professional in comedy and they're like, take it seriously, dude. Hey, we learned a thing about you that seems a little bit uncool. Here's an opportunity to play out our class fantasy. You're lesser than us. You made a mistake, can't you see? But maybe, maybe everyone will be canceled tomorrow. That's a wish that I made to God, and I think that he heard me, maybe. Maybe everything will be better if everyone's canceled tomorrow. The weatherman said that the weather will be better than maybe. Yeah, maybe people will be nicer tomorrow. Is people chatting right now while I perform, kind of like comics whispering in the back of the room? That's how I felt while I did it during Colton said, do you think that's a little rude? It was still felt pretty good to ignore a comic while I think of my own set. Because even though we're going through this all together, all I can think about is how I need to express myself. <laughs> but maybe... Maybe I'll learn to play guitar better tomorrow. But until then, this is the best that you're gonna get. Oh shit, I just wiped my hands on my face. I should probably go wash my hands tomorrow. Oh my God, I can't wait for this nightmare to be over. But maybe this is the way it is forever and tomorrow. Thank you.
Thank you, guys. I don't know if that was comedy, but that's what I got. <laughs> <laughs> castles wow i feel like somebody needs to be nicer to him i like him a lot and he just seems so sad songs that's why i'll never go to a music open mic because you think a comedy open mic is bad but anyways i wanted to tell you guys that i've been hunkering down in uh colorado and uh that's where i went to high school so a lot of my old shit is there and i just wanted to show you guys this what is this what's this huh Oh, this is, uh, I used to crochet a lot, and I crocheted myself a, uh, a coin bag, and then I thought, that's silly, but then I opened it up, and I found a condom, which is absolutely ridiculous. You know, it's not ridiculous. Our appreciation for you for the show. Uh, we have a, one amazing show coming up. Um, this next comedian used to be in Austin. Um, he runs a podcast roommates for life. His other roommate is going to be on the show later on. Um, you've seen him on Inside Jokes on Amazon Prime, and you probably know him as the biggest cuddly bear you've ever seen. Put your hands together in your own house for M.K. Paulson. M.K. Paulson, you are my favorite. <laughs> everybody how's everybody <laughs> what was that? oh the old roommate <laughs> ah! Ah! we're trapped it is great to be here three musical acts in a row no i'm sorry i'm not gonna do that don't want you to kill yourself all right it is good to be here love i've been it's it's quarantine but i love performing for my fans i'm always performing for my fans am i right we got one right here uh second fan uh, right over here, big fan stuff going on. No, great to see you guys. I do wish I were dead. Anyway, <laughs> a little bit about me. All right, I am going to take my shirt off. If I get $100, you can Venmo me right here. I think it's already on the screen. But hey, we get to $100, old Big Hog, he's going to take his shirt off. Now, I will warn you, I do have very large nipples, all right? Uh, my mom calls them my Oreolas, and I've never really appreciated that term, but I'm going to say it. They're large and in charge. Do you know how hard it is to find nipple tassels that actually fit me? Any hoozle, what's going on with old Herbert Hugecock over here? I uh, Things have been tough, I'm not going to lie. Uh, many of you know me as Los Angeles' premier gay, tall, sad stand-up comedian, and I... Uh, you know, things are great. I've had a hard time lately. Uh, I haven't been able to go to my uh, support group, you know, my big penis support group. And, um, you know, usually our meetings, we have a bunch of long ones. Am I right? I am really losing it. And I need that support uh, anytime. I've had a crazy day today. I uh, went downstairs, refilled the Brita. And that was about it. So it is a little crazy. I nearly went home to Texas. I am from Texas originally. I grew up in a, in a small town called Mineral Wells. Ever heard of it, you fat whores? I don't think so. Anyway, I nearly went home to Mineral Wells and I, it's close to Fort Worth and I love Fort Worth. It's my, they have the Cowgirl Hall of Fame. It's my second favorite museum in town right after the reverse Cowgirl Hall of Fame. Am I right? It's across the street and looking backwards. Anyway, I nearly went home to Texas and you guys know you guys know, heard it here first. I come from a long line of ranchers, all right? People that put ranch dressing on everything. And I was like, 
I got to get back to the ranch and family. Anybody? All right. It is good to be here. I'm going to look at my notes. Ah, that's a drawing of a horse. I am. Um, this is a lot. Am I going too fast? I can't, I can't read the room, but I can uh, speak into the Zoom. It is a void. Anyway, who likes their credit scores like their golf scores? Am I low, right? All right. That's just an aside. I am, um, again, can't stress it enough. Will take my shirt off if I get $100 in Venmo donations. It's at Marcus Paulson. You guys know you want to see those nipples that are large and in charge. Oh. I do feel like this whole time in my life is basically just a dry run of being, me being a sad single gay man in my 70s. So it's nice to practice reading a lot of books, am I right? Pros before hoes. <laughs> I love it. No, again, I hope somebody hits me with an SUV later outside in front of the, in front of the apartment building. Anyway, uh, I've learned in this time I have a lot in common with my mattress. Am I right? We're both size queens. All right. I love it. Anybody else? Crash landing on planet Earth, love of Panice. I uh, can't get enough penises. What musical comedy? All right, la da 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 da. da. <laughs> All right, I look at that, Sarah Barialis. Oh, I'm gonna say it. Gone too soon. All right, everybody's talking. They're they're saying don't touch your face. And I have one question for the CDC. I have one question for the CDC. By the way, people are like CDC. I heard the CDC did say that actually grinder hookups were allowed. Grinder hookups are allowed during the quarantine. Uh, that's according to the CDC. Of course, the CDC does stand for uh, Center for uh, Dick Consumption. So CDC is saying that that's fine. Now, I do have a question for the CDC, though. People saying don't touch your face. What about if my friends are coming over and sitting on it? I think that's probably okay, just as long as we're not touching it with our hands. But a good sit down on old President Jumbo penises over here face is probably totally fine. No, I am, call me a curly fry guys because I am spiraling. I ran out of notes again, third time. If I get $100 in Venmo, we'll take off my shirt. We'll take it off. See you in hell shirt, am I right? Nobody wants that. All right, please laugh. You know, I may not be able to hear you over the volume of my hair. All right, gonna go back to performing for my fan. Look at that. Oh God. That's what everybody wants. Again, I only have 30 seconds. Gonna check the Venmo donations. Have it, ooh, I, I think I got one. If it's $100, y'all are gonna see some rock hard nipples that are large. I can't stress it enough, very large. We only got to $5, guys. So sadly, you're just gonna get a little bit of side boob. We're gonna see if we can get down there a little bit. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh oh, oh, there we go. And that's it for me, guys. It's been so fun being in here again. Marcus Paulson, I love all of you, and I'll see you in hell. Love him so much. I want to move to LA, but you know, the price is and it's tough and I have a lot of things to do. I would move there for MK, but he hasn't asked me yet. So uh, I am waiting. My uh, $100 doesn't exist, but I would have I would have spent it on, on, those, on those large nips. How about we just keep it rolling? How about my best friend in comedy, the person who I kind of made the transition from improv, I'm sorry, uh, to stand up. Um, how about a person who has a heart so big that she has two dogs and a girlfriend and she houses me every time I go to Denver. How about that person? How about the person who runs Wolf Hall Comedy? How about the person who you're about to see next, Lizzie Wolfson, it'll make sense. Lizzie Wolfson. <laughs> Your best friend in comedy is what I heard. Uh, kind of rude. I thought I was your best friend in life, uh, but thank you so much for having me. Uh, I am in Colorado too. 
we're out here, we're pretending we're on the beach, we're drinking White Claws, we're uh, eating ramen, everything's okay here. Don't worry, I've got spices for the ramen here in uh, Colorado, a little Colorado spice for that. Um, and it is tasty and I don't even know what day it is. So it's amazing. Um, this is so cool to be here. Um, I'm sure you guys did notice this about me when I, when I came onto the stage, the room, the video. Uh, um, I have very curly hair. Uh, it actually takes a lot of genetics to make up my hair. Uh, I'm part Italian, uh, part Jewish, part black, and part ramen noodle. So this is my dad, actually, I guess. Man, I should do that in regular sets. I should just bring ramen every time. That was fun. And um, we're having a good time here. Um, obviously, it's hard for everybody right now. We've been staying inside for the last three weeks. Um, but it's actually not that difficult for me uh, because I'm, uh, I'm a narcoleptic. Uh, and no, that doesn't mean I fuck dead people. It means uh, I sleep a lot. Uh, but I fuck people that are dead inside. So that's pretty much all it is. I, uh, if you don't know what narcolepsy is, it's just the opposite of insomnia. Instead of staying awake all the time, I sleep all the time. So now that I'm home, uh, I take three to four naps a day. Um, so I've been home for three weeks, but it's, it's really felt like a day pretty much. I've been awake for a day. Um, and it's made it really easy, actually. Um, I do enjoy staying home and not work. I can't work uh, because narcolepsy is also an autoimmune disorder. Uh, so I could get sick very fast. Uh, and I'm also lazy. <laughs> it's just, I'm just lazy. They said, I don't have to work. And I said, that's fine. I'll stay home and eat ramen all day and I'll be able to still pay my bills. Um, <laughs> I do have two dogs, which is cool. Um, I love having, I love having dogs. Dogs are, dogs are fun. Does anybody on the crowd have dogs? I can't hear you guys, but I'm, assu I'm assuming everybody in this chat right now has a dog. Um, I've actually fostered a lot of dogs. I've fostered over a hundred dogs in my house into their forever homes. Uh, does that make me a better person than you? Uh, yeah, it does actually, <laughs> it does. That's, that's exact. I just have a hundred foster dogs in my, all I've been doing is having foster dogs and uh, staying at home. Um, but the biggest thing that sucks about having dogs is having to walk them, I think. I hate walking my dogs. Uh, it's just a pain in the ass, especially now, because I don't want to like have to cross the street if somebody's coming down the road or anything. I don't want to deal with that. Um, but I don't have a yard. Um, so I have a little trick. Trick of the trade, you guys. Uh, if you don't feed them, they don't really shit that much. So it's just like a fun trick. If you guys, you know, um, actually, if you don't feed me, I don't, I still shit a lot. So. That one was for my girlfriend. Uh, I am a gay woman. I'm sure you guys noticed by my attire. I'm trying to be a hat lesbian. I'm trying to be, I'm trying to wear more hats now. I can't cut my hair and like do like a, you know, all the other fun gays. I saw Captain Marvel last night or, or Infinity. I don't know. One of the movies. I watched all 185, uh, you know, Avengers movies in the last three days. Um, and she has a dyke haircut. Why can't I have a, like, you know, it's just, it's not fair. Uh, but I am a lesbian. Uh, I live with my girlfriend. Uh, we didn't want to take it too fast. That's always like the joke with lesbians, you know, with U-Haul lesbians, second date is a U-Haul. Um, but we did, uh, I will say the first month we were together, we did sync up Google calendars. Um, so, she knew that I was on the show before I did, actually. I forgot. I 100% forgot I was on the. I showed up just like, I've been sitting in this for three weeks, just waiting to go outside again. I think they'll let me out soon, um, hopefully. Um, I did come out to my parents a few years ago, and when I did, uh, my mom had had a couple of glasses of wine, uh, and uh, she looked at me, and she went, uh, Lizzie, I don't care who you love. I used to live in New York City in the 80s, and there was a lot of cocaine, and there were a lot of poppers, and there were a lot of quaaludes. And I was like, do you know what we're talking about? Because 
I'm not that much fun. I'm a lesbian. I just wear uh, lesbian hats and drink uh, Mango White Claw. This is sponsored actually by Boy White Claw. If you guys didn't know, it's Coors and White Claw. Um, I uh, let's see. I, I how are we gonna leave this? We should we should leave this on a good. I am a bud tender uh, now. Actually, uh, I sell Colorado spices legally, uh, and it's it's a fun job. It's a fun, it's just like being a bartender. It's just like being a bartender. Uh, the difference is, is that bartenders serve you panic attacks, or sorry, oh, well, I fucked it up. Bartenders serve you <laughs> alcohol, uh, and I serve you panic attacks. Uh, and I'm having a panic attack doing this show, actually. So I'm going to have more ramen, more spices, and more mango, white claw. Um, but no, you guys you guys have been super fun. Um, let's see, I... Uh, I like being a bud. It was really easy to get a job, by the way. Selling pot is very easy in Colorado. It's very easy to get a job doing it. Um, I just went in and I was like, do I need to show a resume? And he looked, the manager looked at me and he was like, you dab, bra? And I was like, hell yeah, bra. And uh, he gave me the job. No resume, no address. Um, I don't know if they know that I still work there. I I just didn't, I just stopped going in because it's crazy that people are still out buying pot uh, when they should be staying in their houses. Everybody stay home. Um, I uh, I went to school up here. I live in Colorado. I went to school up here. Um, it's very cool uh, in Colorado. Um, I actually am so glad that I went to school for something that's been so helpful in the job market. Uh, I went to school for equine science. So uh, if you don't know what that is, I went to school uh, for horses. And you guys, it was so easy to find a job. It was so easy to find a job after school. I was like clippity cloppity here and brushing mains. I was, was broke. I was very broke. It was so hard to find a job. Um, you guys, my degree was so useless. It lost its first race and I had to shoot it. So uh, now I have a degree in glue and um, you know, obviously it's working out because I'm, I'm selling pot now. Uh, I, um, I did get one job actually after school. I worked at a feedlot in Texas, actually, uh, in the panhandle of Texas. That was super fun. It was hard though, cause I had to like take care of, um, cows obviously that were sick, um, because they get sick in there. And I actually had to shoot a lot of cows on the job. Um, and the thing that vegans don't understand about that is, um, they deserved it. So every single one. I hope somebody Venmo's me for that joke alone, just so I don't have to go work at a feedlot. I just don't want to shoot any more cows ever. Um, it's fair. <laughs> All right, you guys. Um, I think I'm going to end on dead cows because that that was that was fun, right? I just you know uh, you know eat your spices, uh, drink your white claws, you guys. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Dead cow. Hey, I'm back. I'm Colton. I'm your host. <laughs> uh, Lizzie's my best friend, so she already knows this story. Uh, and also, comedy's my life, so that's, uh, that's I don't really have any other friends outside of comedy, but welcome, friends, new friends. Uh, when I first came out to my dad, he goes, don't just go shove it in your asshole. And, well, that was upsetting news for me. I was hoping that he'd be a little bit more understanding that that's the best part. And, uh, and I said, why? And he said, that's how you get hemorrhoids. And then turns out 20 years later, he has hemorrhoids and he be bleeds out of his asshole and is my favorite thing about him. Uh, because I just told you, you get hemorrhoids from, oh no, I fucked that joke up. This is a bunch of fucked up jokes. This one is a little bit deeper. You said dead cow, I said uh, bruised asshole. But how about we just bring up our next comic, uh, Katie Felton. Give it up for Katie Felton. She is a favorite comic of Austin.
happy Friday, everyone. Um, I hope you can hear me. If not, your dog definitely can. And that is what we call high pitched voice comedy. Um, typically, I start out my sets making fun of the place I am performing, but I am making I'm at my home. So um, that wouldn't make too much sense. Anyway, um, crazy times guys, but I think there are opportunities here that we are overlooking. Um, for example, I think this is a good time to rebrand depression to self quarantining because I am doing all the same shit I do when I am depressed, which is just sleeping, eating shit I know that's bad for me and watching a lot of movies. Um, except this time I'm being called a hero. So let's remember this in six months when I'm sad again, that I am a hero inside. Um, so yeah, that's my life. Um, yeah, this hasn't been too bad, except for that I feel like I am running out of movies, which I know is not true in a thing. There's like thousands of movies on everything. Um, but I avoid any type of like heroic uplifting movie where they overcome some circumstance because I am just sad and I know that I would not have the will to make it through that long. Like I would be out in 15 minutes, like once the movie started, if it were my life. So if that were my real life situation, they would have to rename The Revenant if it were a movie based on me. If the bear doesn't kill her, she'll do it herself. Um, yeah, it's tough. But I am watching, I'm catching up on all my docs because I love documentaries. It's my favorite genre of movie to watch. Um, and of course, after I'm done watching a documentary, I change my life completely based on what I just watched. So like when Marie Kondo came out, I got rid of all my shit because it wasn't bringing me joy. Um, watched Tiger King and now I have a makeshift tip hotline set up in my house. So if you know who killed Carol Baskin's husband or have tips on how she did it, uh, hit your girl up, put it in the Venmo subject line of how she killed him. Um, I'm trying to catch her. Uh, but yeah, so if I were making a documentary, I would want it to be just me following around Dwayne The Rock Johnson um, in his everyday life, but have him talk about how he goes down on women for a uh, long extended periods of time um, because every guy wants to be like The Rock and every girl wants their man to be like The Rock as well. So yeah, go down on your lady, on your ladies, guys. Um, I feel like I'm spiraling. Um, so it's funny how I am so into documentaries and I changed my life based on them because I refuse to watch any food documentaries that talk about how my, like my eating habits are bad. So I am never gonna watch Fed Up because my love of M&Ms and sugar outweighs my love of documentaries. And I'm probably just four documentaries away from becoming a hermit, but at least I will be able to still eat cookies. Um, yeah, this is a weird time. Guys are still reaching out on dating apps, which I find very strange because I definitely don't wanna to talk to any strangers right now. That's the last thing I wanna do. Um, but I feel like even weirder than them reaching out when there's no point of being able to see this person is the fact that I'm still matching with um, rich guys. So, you know, like the guys who post the picture of them next to their fancy sports car or like 
on their balcony of their high rise apartment. Cause I feel like I just don't give off that vibe at all. Um, but I, I have discovered um, why they're matching with me is because they think that I am also rich um, because I look like what a Renaissance painter used to paint rich people as, which is just very pale and doughy. Um, yeah, and my doughiness has become a problem. Um, I'm increasingly getting messages from guys asking if I do kinky shit because of the stereotype that bigger girls are freakier in the bedroom. Um, so I'm taking this opportunity of self-isolation to lose weight. So now people know this is missionary position only. Um, so yeah, that's me. I'll just be losing weight and then eating shit and then losing weight and eating more cookies throughout this whole isolation. But I am a hero. Okay. Thanks, guys. Katie Felton, losing weight and eating shit. Uh, fun. Sounds like my high school years. I don't know what that means. Um, if you're just tuning in, this is Isolation Company, and we have pro stand-up comedians uh, coming in and doing what we would like to do in front of people, but we're doing it in front of you, and it looks like we have a bunch of viewers, so thank you for being here, and thank you for letting me in your home. Fun. Hey. I'm bunkering down in Colorado, which is where I grew up, and um, I found some more things of me, uh, of what I did. This is my high school um, ceramics project, and it's, uh, it's a hammer, hammer and sickle, which are thinking like badass, but then it says, we don't let our enemies have guns. Why should we let them have ideas by Joseph Stalin? What happened to me in my childhood? I'll tell you what, repression. Anyways, we have an amazing comic uh, coming up, and I'll tell you what, we just have five more. This next comedian, he is so beautiful, except I want to kiss him? He paid me to say that. Jared McCorkle, I'm drinking another beer, because it's Friday. <laughs> everybody uh good to be here um just up top i want to say a few things uh because you know, a lot of you'll probably know circumstances are a bit weird uh for me to be here um it's a it's awkward uh colton and i and i, I don't know if a lot of people know this we used to date and um and it can be awkward if you're a comic and and you know you're dating someone that's not as funny as you that's always hard that was hard for me um and I had to break up with Colton and that was hard because um, his face wasn't pretty enough. That was a big part of it. Um, he was bad at sex. It's a big, big one. Um, and actually, this is true. If you get his clothes off, he is quite fat. Um, but the, the big thing is that Colton used to steal my jokes. And that was the worst part. I would watch his act and, you know, he'd be like, I'm Colton. And he would dance like he does or whatever. And I would see it and I would tell him like, um, Look, I'm the funny gay person who's beautiful. That's what I do. Um, I was like, you should do what you do. You know, like do something that's true to you. I'm bad at sex. That's who you are, you know. But anyway, so we passed that. Things are going well. Um, and I'm glad to be on the show, honestly. Um, this isn't how I'm used to doing comedy, obviously. This is a weird format. Uh, in a lot of ways, it's better because I feel like you guys uh, aren't going to know when I have a boner. So that's way better. Or will you? We'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, what else? 
Oh, I, so this is super weird. I'm in New York. I don't know if anybody said that uh, or anything like that. I didn't watch anybody else's uh, at all, and I won't. But um, yeah, it's it's crazy. Uh, it's all, the epidemic of of the disease. You know, uh, first Corona, now you know before AIDS, that was even worse. But so too not good. Um, but I think things are good. People have been asking me how I'm doing, which I just think is, is really sweet. I want to tell you, first of all, don't worry. Uh, it's I'm, I'm, you know, barricaded in or whatever. And yeah. Okay. 50% of the time I was doing something I'm doing a hundred percent of the time. That's not like a big deal. Uh, there have been a few weird moments, of course. Um, there is a dead rat in the wall, I think. And so it smells like a corpse, um, in here all the time. That's tough. Uh, also, um, I, uh, have run out of food and they have turned the water off, but I, I really don't think God would let anything happen to me. So, you know, whatever. Um, also, you know, the funny thing is the, I haven't really talked to a lot of my friends from back in Austin comedy and Houston comedy and kind of a down of question. I want to, and I want to let you know, uh, it's not one better than all of you and uh, way funnier than any of you. Um, but any, but yeah, it's fine. Uh, and, uh, a lot of, a lot of people, uh, back home have like messaged me, like, am I funny enough to do, um, comedy, uh, in New York? And, uh, you know, of course you're not, of course you're not, but good thing, honestly, um, you're not funny enough to do it in Austin. So that's fine. Why would you care? Right? Just come out here and you, know, you can bomb here and that's fine. Um, and I did want, <laughs> I wanted to let a few people know because there is some weirdness here. Um, just like, what do I need to know? You're going to learn stuff when you come to New York. Eventually you will, or you'll die or whatever. I don't know. But um, there's a few rules for comedy. One, uh, it close. Okay. It's, a, it's not about jokes. It's, a, here, it's called a tie. You wear a tie. Uh, what about my performance? Get a fucking blazer. Okay. Um, let's see what else. Uh, number two, screenplays. It's just screenplays. I wrote something. Uh, it's a Tim and Eric meet Godzilla. It's going to be really good. Uh, everybody loves me now. Um, and number three, and this is a, sort of subtle. It's sucking and fucking. Those are the two just at the same time, probably, but either way, jokes are dumb. Um, what else? Let's see. Uh, the food is way better in New York. Uh, I'll tell you right now, I, I, I like the, the taste of it, but I'm, I'm a white person. So it's just, it gives me uh, diarrhea instantly. And, and it's worth it. Honestly, I don't even think that if to, honestly, right now, I don't trust food that doesn't give me diarrhea. Like if somebody's like, Oh, this food is great. I'm like, okay, but how soon did you have to take a shit after you ate it? Well, then did you go to a Chipotle? Fuck you. Um, but what else? Can I say, I, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, also I wanted to like, I'm not big on Twitch or whatever the fuck this is to be clear, but I just want to say, I, they told me right before, right before the show that I am not allowed to do cocaine on it, which is fuck, which is fucking bullshit because honestly I was, it was okay for me to do cocaine in the army, but I, but I can't do it on, on the internet. So yeah, I, I'm just not, and it's ridiculous. Um, but anyway, um, I think that's all I, I wanted to say. Uh, could, can you guys hear that? Did you hear that? Um, I, I think, uh, I think somebody m might be trying to get in upstairs. Uh, I'm going to, I'm sure, look, honestly, I'm sure not, there's nothing wrong. I'm just going to check it out real quick. And I'll be uh, right back and we can finish this comedy thing. I'm going to be right back. Just give me one second. Okay, I'm. It's fine. I was one of the local kids uh, in the neighborhood. Got caught in one of my traps, and I was. Oh, I was scared. I got up there. He was already dead, so it should be fine. Look, I'm gonna clean this up. Uh, but thank you so much for having me on whatever this was. I appreciate it. You guys have a good day.
Jared McCorkle is spilling all of our, our all of our little dirty secrets. You know, somebody in the chat though found out that uh, I was his, his beard. Yes, I uh, we 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 claimed he was a straight man for a while, and uh, people believed it when I was on his arm. Uh, so that's fun. Hey, you guys ready for another comedian? I'm sure you are. But first, I have to sing most of the happy birthday to Laura Smith. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, Laura Smith. She is a person who made all of this happen. And while we're at it, why don't we just thank tech man Richard Goodwin and Valerie Lopez for booking the show. And if you hear some music, that's Derek Capswa. And he has a joke called, um, uh, who called the cops was? So that's fun. Hey, how about the next comedian? He runs a, uh, you guys feel in a little bit like, oh, I hate health mentally. Uh, this man will help you out. He runs a podcast on uh, Cold Town, Cold Town, uh, I don't know where it's on, but it's on Cold Town's feed. And it's a, uh, a improv theater. And this man runs it every Wednesday at 8 p.m. So if you'd like to put your hands together for a man who will help your brain, Carlton Wilcoxon. Holy shit. Jared McCorkle, what the fuck kind of outfit was that? That was nuts. I'm not going to do any of that. Uh, I'm just going to tell a bunch of one-liners that I wrote. Um, if you don't know what a one-liner is, it's like laffy taffy jokes, but like mine's won't be for kids or it's like Mitch Hedberg, but like I'm black. So it's going to be different. Uh, like... An example is uh, I'm gonna feel guilty about inviting people over to my home after all this is over. Uh, Cause I don't know if they know that 90% of my home has been touched by my naked body. That's a one liner. Also half my, if you donate to me, half my donations, I'm, half, the, half the donations I'm gonna also donate to whatever Corona shit's going on that's taking money. Uh, next one, my name's Carlton. Uh, yeah, Carlton, that's a great name. It's a name that no woman wants to say while having sex. Let's see. They say that nice guys finish last. I say they finish in their hands. Let's see. Oh, I told myself I'm not going back to being broke. So uh, that's why I'm ignoring my check engine light. Hmm. Fun fact about me, uh, the carpet does match the drapes, okay? Uh, that means my junk looks like Whoopi Goldberg. Let's see here. Hmm. A lot of people like to say uh, the party's over when the roof, the roof is on fire. Uh, for me, the party's over when Chad challenges me to a freestyle battle. Let's see. Ooh. Uh, a lot of people like to ask me, like, how can I find you on social media? How can I find you on social media? Uh, go to any uh, social media platform, type in Carlton and click the black one. Uh, I recently learned that uh, sagging, sagging spells niggas backwards. Yeah, uh, which proves that I've been oppressed by anagrams as well. Let's see. Oh, <laughs> I like that one. Uh, my mom had the whole like attitude of like, I don't need no man. I don't need no man. I don't need no man. And what she didn't realize is like, I did, you know? Oof. I just recently found out that scumbag, like the word scumbag is a 1950s slur for like used condom. And I didn't realize that the S was silent. Hmm. I think 
sexual asphyxiation is just like, uh, it's, like it's got to be a white guy thing. Uh, as a black guy, I've never found anything sexual about a noose. Uh, that was dark. <laughs> uh, that was dark. I like it though. Uh, <laughs> wait. I'm sorry. I'm. I'm. I shouldn't be doing this. I'm looking at the chat. I think I see. I think I see my dad in here, which is which is strange. Uh, dad, if you're in here, like, don't don't get quiet. If you're in here, dad, uh, go to therapy. Okay. Like, what are you doing? Like, go to therapy. They do the thing on. They do the thing online. They do the thing on the phone. All right. I know you want to act all tough because like you went to prison and shit, but like you know, like that's traumatic. All right. You're you're a broken person. Go get therapy. All right. And look. All right, if you're in the chat, just tell my dad to go to therapy. Matter of fact, uh, here, call him or like text him. Just text him, go to therapy. Uh, his number is 937-329-8400. Uh, 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 text him and tell him to go to therapy, okay? Because he has a lot of things to talk about, okay? Um, oh, for instance, there was this one time for real where like he would write me letters when I was a kid right? And he'd like these eloquent long ass letters about like, oh my, my dear son. And like, I wish I could hold you and stuff. Right. And I would just reply with like a uh, stick figure drawing of like me, my mom and some random dude named Scott. Right. And like, that's gotta be like three sessions right there. Uh, so that go to therapy. All right. What are you doing? Okay. Like, and you know, just, to, just if we're gonna, if we're going to like encourage him to go to therapy, once again, his number is 937-329- eight, four, six, five. All right, if we're gonna encourage him, you know, throw some news in there, okay? Uh, it doesn't matter, guys, girls, okay? He went to prison, that's like his college. He experimented sexually is what I'm saying, okay? Just just tell him to go to therapy, all right? Get him out of there, you know, just, just that, you quit, quit trying to, you know, hide in the uh, in the chat, whatever, I, I, I see you, okay? Don't do not do that. Uh, all right, back to one letter. Sorry, I had to have a quick PSA there that, you, you know, you know how parents are. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I live, oh, uh, I was, uh, at 14, I was in a gang, I was having sex, and I was going hard, and like, the Boy Scouts, okay, uh, which means I wanted to, uh, get money, fuck bitches, and save the rainforest, right? Uh, in Austin, uh, there's a lot of white women who think they're Beyonce, and they're not Beyonce because you can't be bootylicious with the gluten-free diet. You can you can keep that. That's that's yours. Um, let's see what else. A lot of people want me to be aggressive and blunt as a black man, aggressive and blunt. But really, I'm just like black and mild. That's for my smokers out there. I see y'all. Okay. Uh, let's get. Let's get one more. All right, this last one. This is the last one. Last one liner right here. Here we go. Ready? This is the last one. All right. Uh, this is also a true story. Uh, when I was like seven years old, I used to clean my grandma's home for like side money. And one time I found a gun underneath her wig, right? And that was the first time I realized uh, that's not her real hair. That's it. Cheers, y'all. Thank you for supporting. You're gonna give me your dad's number and I'm not gonna not text him. I texted him, hey dad. Are you my dad? And so I, I hope that he's like, oh shit, I have a new son because he will get one. Uh, how about I just let you know again, we, will, we thank you so much for having us. Um, also, we're down to our last three comedians and you're in for a treat. Please, please, please stay around. You, you won't get to see this anywhere. You're, you're too lucky to get the next three comedians. And I, and I hope you say it. Uh, if you are just coming, welcome, and we love you. We're ha we're having a blast. Um, this next comedian, a, uh, she started a new podcast called the Mac and Zach Attack Show. It's a podcast, and uh, she's smarter than any of you will ever be. So that's 
a big uh, credit. I have never given that credit out before, but she wrote it down, so I said it. Uh, give it up, put your hands together for Mac Fitzgerald. Put your hands together in your own house. Hey, uh, how's it going? Uh, my name is Mac. <laughs> Oh man, thanks, thanks for having me. It's so it's so good to be here. I'm actually I'm actually really enjoying quarantine. Uh, I'm getting to do a lot of things I don't normally get to do. Uh, focus on a lot of things I love. I uh, I've been eating corn almost every meal. <laughs> they didn't call it a quarantine for nothing. <laughs> Am I right? Um, it's going to pretty much be downhill uh, from here on out. Uh, do you guys like corn? <laughs> Is this is this relatable content? If you like, if you like corn, uh, type in the comments. Corn. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll know what you mean. I feel like a, a lot of people don't like corn, uh, which is weird for a corn girl like myself. Uh, and a lot of people, I feel like they don't like it for for the, all the same reason, and it's all because of the whole does not digest thing, <laughs> which is weird because that's my favorite thing about corn, the reunion. Every single time, I'm just like, could have sworn I chewed you. <laughs> but look at you. You haven't changed a bit. It's a, it's a beautiful cycle. It's a beautiful cycle. I, uh, I don't mean to, to brag. I, I got a job actually right before all this, this happened. Uh, I'm very excited to announce that I am now a uh, brand ambassador for Country Crock Butter. Yeah, I'm sure you're clapping, so thank you. Uh, they said I had the face for it, so that's a butter face. If you if you didn't get it, I uh, I I was trying to install a bidet on my toilet like a week ago because I'm already out of toilet paper. Um, I don't I don't plan ahead, and uh, it turns out I'm not a plumber, so uh, every everything is broken. Now, I, uh, I don't have any water in my toilet, haven't for over a week. Also, turns out, uh, no water in the toilet, not a maintenance emergency. So that, this is, this is me for the foreseeable future. I've been taking a lot of showers, a lot of showers, and eating a lot of cheese, uh, just to give my train a chance, <laughs> especially with all that corn I've been ingesting but not digesting. Um, I was I was cleaning my shower this morning with a with a Mr. Clean magic eraser. Ever heard of it? And I, I uh, does it, does anybody else uh, think that Mr. Clean is like kind of hot? <laughs> uh, they didn't. He's he's a mascot for a sponge. They didn't need to make him sexy, but they did. They why why did they give him one single hoop earring? I don't know, but they did. They did. That. I don't know how that gives him the credibility to clean my bathtub, but the, he's qual. I had no idea I was into old bald pirate pirate type. But turns out that's my. Like, let's just say he's not the only one getting getting wet around here, if, if you know what I mean. Uh, I, I hate that I said that. I, uh, hmm, I, uh, what do you guys say? What's, what's the right thing to say when somebody knocks on the door of the bathroom stall that you're in? I, I'm really looking for some feedback here. I always mess it up somehow i i don't know what it is i get very nervous and i overthink it which lends itself to a very long silence and then i choke on the words and every single time it just comes out something like ah! the witch that's not what you want that's uh i mean it does uh people still do get the same same end result <laughs> but uh it's uh it's weird when you have to leave the toilet after or the bathroom after after that um another another question i have uh please again <laughs> let let a girl know help me out uh what is the right level of enthusiasm like once you have once you have picked your go-to catchphrase if you will 
uh, what is the right level of enthusiasm? Because I feel like it's weird to be like, <laughs> somebody's in here. <laughs> that's weird. That's that's too excited to be in there. But then on another note, it's weird. It would be weird to be like, somebody's in here. So I'm just, I just help. Just let me know. I'm very drunk. Uh, do you guys like my slippers? They're rockets. Um, whew, I was in a, I was in a, I was in a car wreck. Uh, right before all all of this happened, I was I was uh, in a rental car. It was all my fault. It was very em embarrassing. I was driving a PT Cruiser, so more more like PT Loser. Am I right? No, but it was humiliating. I think we can all agree that PT Cruisers are like the crocs of transportation. Uh, I was absolutely I'm mortified, and uh, man, I was I was seriously like spinning out on the highway, going like 70 miles an hour. Semi trucks were having to <coughs> turn into snakes, apparently slippery little snakes, to get around me. And my only thought was, somebody is going to find my dead body in this stupid soul patch equivalent of a car that there goes my reputation i'm in i'm embarrassed uh luckily i'll be dead i don't want to end it on i don't want to end it on dead here's a here's a thought provoking thought have you ever have you ever just looked around your apartment and and asked yourself huh i wonder how many chameleons are in here you know because you would never know that's just something to think about. Thanks for having me. My name's Mac. Please pay me. But I liked it and I was into it. She should have ended on Dead Cow. That seems to be a big hit. Uh, also, that was really Carlton's dad's number. So definitely text him. I just saw on the Zoom call, he is getting a call from his dad and it's going places. So uh, definitely uh, text that. We have two comedians left and you are in for a treat. This next comedian, Conan, Comedy Central, Venmo, Caleb Sinan, and Hill send you his 45-minute bootleg special. Give it up for Christy Bukley. Ha ho! It's me, Christy Seiden, or whatever the fuck is going on. I have no idea. Um, how are you guys? Super happy to be here. Thank you. I'm Christy Buckley. Actually, that is me. Um, I have credits too, but but Caleb's were better. So let's just stick with those. I think that's good. Um, this is this mic is not on. This is just like a security blanket, not even plugged in at all. This is all a sham. Uh, and I think that my parents would agree that it's been a sham this whole time. So uh, they get to tell me I told you so about comedy and I get to tell them I told you so about Trump. So we're all living our best life now. Anyways, guys, super happy to be here on this Austin show. Uh, Austin, cool city, you guys should be used to isolation uh, just as soon as, just from the rest of your state, I assume. So this should feel quite normal. Denver's kind of like that too. If you like step outside of the limits of the city, it's all of a sudden just like, Corona's a hoax. And you're like, okay, wow, I went too far north. Anyways, okay. 
Uh, super excited to be here. What was I going to talk about? I've been watching Disney Plus, you guys. That's been what I've been spending most of my days doing. It's so nostalgic, you know, it's so nostalgic. I don't know if you know this, but um, it, it just like will take you back to another time. You know, I like turned on Aladdin today and I was just like, ooh, it feels like my parents are getting divorced all over again, you know? So those are the only, um, <clears throat> that's where that's at for me, you know? Every time I turn on a movie, it's just like, I can show you the world. Todd's crying in the kitchen. That's my dad. Um, I brought you guys visuals since there's not much else we can do. Look at that. It's my dad with a cowboy hat and a dead deer. If you're just trying to picture a man named Todd, I think that's exactly what you would uh, think of. Anyways, guys, uh, I, everyone always tries to like make you feel better when your parents are divorced. You know, they try to like give you this like silver lining. They're always like two Christmases though, two Christmases. It's not two Christmases. It's one and one tenth Christmases. Okay. It's where you go to mom's house and she takes dad money, takes dad's money and has a nice Christmas. And then you go over to dad's house and he hands you a check and then whispers in your ear later, don't cash that. Like that is what dad's Christmas is. It's also a sham. <laughs> Nothing's real. Uh, if anything, if you get any presents at dad's Christmas, it's just to replace the things you already have at mom's house house you know it's just like here's some luggage so you can take your clothes from mom's house to dad's house here's a new toothbrush for dad's house here's a new mom for dad's house you know shout out to victoria i'm <laughs> just kidding don't say her name again it i don't want to it could invoke her anyways um okay what else did we want to talk about here uh shout out to my stepdad this is the best picture i have of him, oh uh, God, he really is my best parent. Uh, he, we don't talk a lot. He like about or <laughs> my stepdad kind of reminds me of Obama because he's just here to make sure, um, just to like kind of like, leave me alone and just make sure I have health insurance. That's what my stepdad and Obama were both here for. Anyways, um, let's see. Uh, sometimes, oh, I got this one. Sometimes if dad was having a good year, you could get a new, like if he saved up enough Marlboro bucks, you could get a Marlboro jacket for Christmas. Go Todd, 98 was a good one. You the real one, Todd. Okay, anyways, I'll go back. Uh, what was I gonna say? Oh uh, God, uh, we're in elections now, we're elections. The last election was just so tough, you know? No, we did not vote for Hillary. I thought we would vote for Hillary millennials. I thought we would do it. But then I realized that uh, we didn't vote uh, for Hillary because the last time our parents, uh, last time we voted for a Clinton, our parents got divorced. So that was really tough. That was 92 was a tough year. Anyways, um, let's see, what else do I wanna talk about uh, here? Uh, let's see. I oh I have not been having sex in quarantine. I have fed up. Like you know your your self esteem is low when you're just like oh my god he doesn't like me enough to break quarantine. I know it. Ugh. Anyways, um that's how I've been feeling. Also, do you guys sometimes like forget we're in quarantine? Like I just like sit around all day. I think I'm just having a normal like lazy day, and then all of a sudden I'll just like wake up from half a nap. I'm just like oh shit. Like it just like hits me like a bus sometimes when I'm watching tv I'll forget and then like a new like uh promo for a show will come on and I'm like "Ooh, this looks spooky and then I'm just like is that Jessica Lang she's let herself go and then you're like fuck this is a commercial that's Betsy DeVos this is real anyways okay uh I have not been having sex. I did have a sexual encounter recently. Um, I don't have a picture of the gentleman today, but I have a picture from when he was in fifth grade. So that's, it's, it's a blowjob joke. So just enjoy this fifth grade sweet picture boy. Anyways, uh, we'll get there. Guys, I, uh, <laughs> I um, went on a date recently. Uh, we went to a bar. Remember when you could do that? We sat on the patio because my date was a smoker, but I can change a man. And uh, then we went back to my house. Things started getting hot and heavy. This exact room, you guys. What? Look at this sex den. Anyways, guys, we went <laughs> back to my house. We started making out. It was great. And then all of a sudden, he put the brakes on. He was like, whoa, 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 stop, 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 stop. 
I just, I worked all day. I didn't know I was gonna be here. Uh, it, I feel kind of gross. Is it okay if I take a shower? And I was just like, what? <laughs> well, first of all, I popped his dick out of my mouth and then I was like, what? You know, cause uh, anyways, that could have been a detail I could have learned a few beats ago. Anyways, uh, I did let him go take a shower. I was like, don't use my loofah. We're not getting married, freak. And uh, as he was stepping out of the shower, I guess his foot slipped on the ceramic tile and he racked his nuts on the edge of that tub. Uh, now, I know you guys are probably familiar with whiskey dick. That has nothing on clawfoot cock, okay? <laughs> if you smash your peen on some horse, like it's dead for a couple weeks, okay? Two uh, minimum, you know? He came back to the room and I was kind of drunk and still staying ready, you know? <laughs> and uh, he came back and he's just like, I can't have sex with you I really hurt myself and I was like what and he's like no I can't seriously it hurts so bad and I was like what and then I was just like let me try it because if you've ever told a girl who already like gave the okay that they're gonna have sex with you that like a few minutes later you tell her no like we just I just never heard those words before I was so confused anyways um so I uh, thought I was having sex that night instead I just wouldn't give up on this dead penis and I ended up giving his dick mouth to mouth resuscitation for two and a half hours you know just like one two three four one two three staying alive staying alive uh, 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 staying alive Okay, anyways, um, the point is, you guys, I tried everything. I was fluffing his balls like they were throw pillows on a couch. I was like, look alive, grandma's coming over. You know, I fucking tried to put his flaccid penis into a fucking condom. You know, it felt like I was stuffing an unrolled sleeping bag back into the satchel, just like, come on, come on, yeah. You know, and uh, you know, when you're just trying to get it like enough, like just enough girth at the top just to slip the condom over the feet. Like, come on, come on. <laughs> He can't see without his glasses. Anyways, um, I did end the night like a World War II general, just like, you weren't supposed to die on this beach, soldier. You were so close to discharge. Okay. Anyways, um, I am, that was the end of that joke. It doesn't feel like it, you know, it feels like you're just falling into the abyss and that is what it does feel. Anyways, okay, I can focus. Um, you guys, a little bit about me other than, you know, my dad and broken home and dicks. Uh, I, um, I have a disability. <laughs> These gam gams are busted, y'all. Okay, no, I have cerebral palsy, very sexy gim. Thank you so much. And, uh, if you don't know how you can get cerebral palsy, I'll tell you, you know, uh, don't worry, you can't catch it. It's not COVID. Anyways, um, no, you can get a cerebral palsy from a few different things. Number one, you can get cerebral palsy uh, from, I was born very early. Maybe the cookies weren't done in the oven. Okay, but I like a soft chip. It's gooey. Okay. Uh, number two, you can get cerebral palsy from shaken baby syndrome. Uh, but uh, oof, we don't like to talk about that at my house. Right, Todd? <laughs> okay, all right. Anyways, I'm kidding. My dad, what? I'm oh, sorry, I didn't see it. I'll, I'll be done right after this. Thank you. <laughs> sorry, guys, I'm running the light. Oh my God, what an asshole. Anyways, uh, never heard the sound. I'm back. I'll finish this. Actually, let's not finish it, guys. My dad didn't shake me, okay? He'd have to hold me to shake me. That's the last punch. That's all you need. Okay, I liked this too much, apparently. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye. god that's a hero we all heard it that's a hero and we do we want to hear more of her um so we'll listen to her podcast and i should have said these credits at the top some people are saying i'm drinking too much Coors light some people know the truth bad at reading not good at reading i'm more of a numbers person and uh boy god it's christy number one love her so much you can check her out on her podcast Shisa, it is, uh, stop listening to me. It is, oh my God.
I love it so much and I listen to it. Oh, well, it's called Stop Talking to Yourself, not Stop Listening to Me. It's called Stop Talking to Yourself. And uh, I'm sure it's on uh, Apple. And uh, I know I'm the worst Chris Castles, fuck you. And so I would like to read this next comics credits, which you've already heard because I'm bad at reading. Conan, Comedy Central, and he has a very funny joke, which you'll hear on his bootleg special, 45 minutes. Then mow him and he'll send it to you. Give it up for funny boy, Caleb Steinen. guys what's up it's your boy caleb you know me uh i'm on twitch all the time i love twitch i love zoom uh all the apps i downloaded six days ago i love them uh, i'm always on them and uh, don't worry this is just a uh, orange bubbly uh filled with rum i found outside so i'm all good uh so i'm very excited about uh the quarantine i, I love my shows my commute is pretty short uh to, to perform i love it uh, as a comic, I've never had uh, paid leave. I don't even know how to ask for paid leave. But uh, one time, a guy paid 20 bucks to get off stage. So I feel like that's pretty close. Uh, that's something. Uh, I did one of these live stream shows last night, and they had it to where um, the, the audience could unmute their mics so that we could hear the laughs. Uh, and halfway through my set, uh, the host said, hey, audience, don't forget, unmute your mics. So the comics can hear laughter and they unmuted him and still did not laugh. So, uh, hey, some things never change. Uh, it's still your boy. Comedy's still hard. Um, I love looking at live comments during my set. Uh, it's one of the coolest things about uh, live stream shows. Um, so many of them are racial. I love it. People are guessing my race. The number one guess is ISIS. Turns out not a race. Uh, the internet is a horrible place. I'm not ISIS, um, but uh, people can't tell if I'm Jewish or Muslim or whatever. Uh, and I didn't know what I was either growing up. Uh, so I asked my dad, I was like, what are we? What do I say we are? And he said, say we're black Irish. And I said, I'm going to say Irish. Uh, cause I think you, come up, dad. Uh, that's my, that's my pops. Uh, he, I was talking, I talk to my dad on the phone every day now, my mom and my dad every day, hours on end. It's the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Uh, I don't think that would happen if I were dead. So, uh, just, uh, weighing options. Uh, but I uh, talked to my dad. He told me today that he came up with No Way Jose. The saying, he thinks he came up with No Way Jose, uh, and he's angry about it. He's not uh, like, oh, isn't that fun? He's like, he wants the head of uh, wh whoever's making millions on that saying, which is uh, not anyone. It's Yosemite Sam and Bugs Bunny. Uh, it's nothing. Uh, my mom thinks she came up with Do the Do. Um, that's why my parents are in love. They both think they've been screwed over uh, by things that have never happened. Um, and my mom's angry about it too. She thinks she came up with it in 1968 and that Mountain Dew heard her say that in Georgia and uh, decided to make money off of it. Uh, so, hey, my family's great. <laughs> I FaceTime with my mom now. It's something I never to do, but it's happening all the time. Um, we FaceTime today and there was a hamster next to her head. And I said, look out for that. She doesn't own an hamster, I, I thought but she just got a hamster and she's like, oh, that's fatso. That's just fatso, don't worry about him. Uh, and I was like, okay, cool. You know, make a conversation. Like, why'd you call him fatso? And she's like, he ate his brother. And I was like, oh, well, you name things weird. I would have named him a uh, murder because he's a murderer. He's not just a little chubster. He uh, killed his brother for food. Uh, and uh, even I wouldn't do that. And I'm a big fat book. Um, so, <laughs> Uh, this is pretty fun. I'm from Georgia. Uh, I got my first gun when I was 12. I didn't want it, but it is Georgia and that is the law. Uh, you get a gun as a child there. And uh, I was supposed to just paint this guy's house for uh, 50 bucks. That was what the day was supposed to be. And I'm up on the ladder painting away and he comes over to me with a gun. I don't have any cash. I was like, what is about to happen? And he said, don't worry, this gun's worth more than $50. So if it's okay with you, I'll just pay you in this gun. 
And uh, I was like, hmm. So I'm walking down the street with my new gun and I'm having a great time, you know, just being a kid, just like, bang, 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 bang. <laughs> you know, pow, 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 pow. And when you do all that, people get out of your way. And uh, so I walk in the front door of my parents' house with a gun uh, that I did not have when I left. And my dad goes, whoa, what's up with that? And I was like, oh yeah, you didn't have any cash? And my dad goes, great, that's worth more than $50. And that's the last he asked me about my gun. Uh, so never brought it up again. That is a Georgia background check. Uh, as long as you wanted that gun, you get to keep it. Uh, it's a law that is uh, bad and it uh, doesn't work. Uh, I'm against your gun. I was like, no, I'm not going to. Don't mail a gun uh, to, to LA. Somehow, I think it's frowned upon. Um, so I don't know what to do. Uh, my job as a comedian, uh, the last job I had that was a real one was at Jimmy John's, and that's the worst company that's ever been. I hope they burn uh, in hell. I think they're horrible. Uh, Mr. Actual Jimmy John, I hope he dies too. He used to come to our store and be like, you want to be the fastest to Georgia? And I said, I don't care. I don't care. I don't, and I don't know you. Uh, but Jimmy John's is the worst company that's ever been, in my opinion. Uh, they're the only restaurant that has never said they taste good. Uh, you, I don't think anyone else has cornered that market of uh, avoiding the topic altogether. You're allowed to say what you want in that. You can say anything you want. And they're like, hey, how's this uh, sandwich? You know, like, quick. You're like, is that, is it good? And they're like, you want it right now? And I'm like, well, is it, I, can you tell me the ingredients? They're like, we'll put it in your mouth before you order it. Just please get this sandwich. Uh, and then we're going to shoot it off the bow. Um, so folks, um, uh, this is this is what my act is like, uh, and it's always like this. Um, if you want to see me doing jokes to people in the crowd and the thing, you can do get my special and just uh, Venmo me and I'll send it to you. Whatever you want. Most people Venmo a dollar and say suck my dick, and I say I'll take whatever I can get. Uh, and then some people give me more who are rich and they deserve. It. I think it helps them sleep at night. But uh, hey, whatever. If you're rich, you got millions in the bank. Give me some. Well, you know what am I gonna do with it? Probably what I did with the money I had before now, which is nothing. Uh, I'll blow it uh, because I don't care about anything but uh, comedy so far. So, uh, hey, folks, thank you so much for watching my set. Uh, this has been the best night of my life. Uh, have a great evening. I love you. Good night. Somebody told me the lighting was a little harsh on my face, so I took my shirt off, and there are my nibs. So thank you for staying to the end of the show. I don't know if you wanted to see it, but that's that. Um, if you guys missed out and you didn't know if um, you you didn't know what to Venmo people, just scroll down to the bottom. All of their tag names are there. And uh, thank you so much, Richard Goodwin, the Tech Man Master. Happy birthday, Laura Smith, and thank you again. Valerie Lopez at Comedy Wham. We do this every uh, Tuesday and Friday now. So uh, come get drunk with me. I don't know who else drank. You guys didn't tell me if you guys were all drinking or if I just drank alone. So that's, uh, okay, cool. Cool, some people did. We'll see you next Tuesday. See you next Tuesday. I'm so sorry. This feels uh, 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 too much.